Today on Shop Nation, we address the elephant made of wood in the room and make a compact wood storage cart that I think would fit perfect in most garage workshops. Welcome to the most embarrassing corner of my shop, which is where I currently store all of my wood. Thanks to Hone for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you've been following the channel for any time, you know that I've tried to tackle the wood storage problem with my swinging tool wall thingamajig that I put in my last shop. And it worked out really well for that particular space and how that garage door was set up in my shop. And when I moved to this new shop, I installed the exact same swinging tool wall in a very similar spot in this shop, but it just doesn't work as well. And one of the reasons why it doesn't work so well is that behind the swinging tool wall is our sprinkler control panel, which lays right smack dab in the middle, which is where the wood is designed to go. And another reason why this doesn't work as well in this shop versus my last one is this curb that goes around the perimeter of the entire garage. You can see that the lower part of the door actually hits that curb. Now I could mount it higher, but then it gets into other issues. And I also can't stack wood as efficiently behind it. So more or less just kind of gets in the way, which just to uh, turns into that. So you can see I end up just stacking my wood right up against the swing tool wall, which no longer swings. And my plan is that I wanna get rid of it and I wanna replace it with a rolling wood cart, but not a gigantic one like you see guys making in their shops. Now I think they're awesome, but I just don't have the space for something like that. So I've drawn up the plans for a miniaturized version for anyone with a small shop like mine or somebody maybe who's sharing a shop with a garage. So you may be asking yourself, well, where the heck are you gonna put it? Because I don't think that's quite big enough to put a wood storage cart in. And my answer is I'm gonna put it right here in the middle of the door. Yes, you heard me right. I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna mount it on casters so I can move it around should I need to get in and out of this door in the future. You see wall space in a shop is so valuable and this is essentially a wall that moves. So I wanna take advantage of this any way I can. And the best way I can think to do that is to make a mobile wood storage cart that sits right here. Now you may also be wondering, isn't that kind of close to where your table saw is? It's gonna be hard to feed stuff. I thought about that too. Since I actually have plenty of room on this side, I'm gonna scoot my workbench down and my table saw down so that I can accommodate for that. So the first step of any wood storage cart project is to go buy some wood to make it out of. Hmm. The plans come with optimized cut sheets aimed at making your life easier. In total, this project requires about two and a half sheets of three quarter inch plywood. Okay, and with that, we've got pretty much everything cut out that we need, at least so far. The next step is I wanna assemble what I'm calling the lower frame assembly, which is kind of the rolling platform that this whole cart is gonna live on. Using my new Craig Jig 720 Pro, and man, is this thing awesome. Such an improvement over the previous Craig K5, which I had for years, which actually was also really good. And if you're wondering why I'm assembling the two by fours on their side like this, the answer would be to keep this cart as low profile as possible. You'll see later that the design of the upper portion of the cart adds a lot of strength and stiffness. So I didn't really need it from the two by fours. And here's where my OCD kicks in, which forces me to precisely measure out the screw hole locations. Anyone else out there do this or just me? I'm using a total of six ridiculously overkill swivel locking casters for this cart. Each rated for 175 pounds, and you really only need a break at each corner, but I bought six like a dummy.
And of course, I had to try and ride the thing. I mean, who out there actually has the self-restraint to not do that? I mean, at least if I ate it, I would have caught it on camera, which would have been pretty good. All right, so with the rolling base out of the way, now we can finish addressing the rest of the parts that need some grooves and dados and rabbits and angles cut in them before we can get this thing finally assembled. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Home. Listen guys, as men get older, testosterone levels can drop by one to 2% per year. Tens of millions of men in the United States are suffering from low testosterone or hormone imbalances that are affecting their daily lives. Hone treats your hormone imbalance and low testosterone with real physicians, real science, and real FDA approved methods of treatment. Taking control of things like hormones and testosterone can increase muscle mass, decrease body fat, and give you more energy. And the best way to know if you have one of these imbalances is to get tested. And Hone allows you to do that from the comfort of your home. Now I put a huge emphasis on my health, so more energy and muscle mass sounds pretty good to me. Now I am far from an expert of pretty much everything, certainly not a medical expert, but Hone Health is and they'll be there every step of the way through the process. So here's how it works. You start with the Hone at Home Assessment, which comes with instructions, a pre-printed return label, blood sample tools, and band-aids, which allows you to take a very small blood sample from a finger prick, which gets sent off to an accredited lab for analysis. Then you speak to a real doctor about your results, who then will prescribe you a personal treatment to get your levels back in line. And then then it's as easy as just subscribing to that personalized plan. And what's cool is that subscription includes verification and monitoring, so you can constantly monitor and adjust if needed. Order Hone's easy to use at-home assessment today and take control of your health and future. For a limited time only, viewers can get the at-home assessment and a doctor consultation for only $45. Click on the link in the video description below or go to honehealth.com shopnation to take advantage now. Okay, let's get back to it. As I was saying, I'm using a dado stack to cut a series of grooves along the length of what will be the back panel. You can, of course, do this with a router as well, which is what I ended up doing for the top edge of the back panel. I guess this is technically a rabbit. And I finally learned that making multiple passes on a router is much better than one big pass. I'm not sure why it's taken me so long to learn that, but I got it. Also, I should definitely get around to making a dust collection fitting for this router. Now adding some pocket holes to what will be the bottom edge of the back panel. and finally adding the angled cuts to the vertical dividers. For this, I'm gonna use my Craig ACS table setup. It's pretty much perfect for things like this, and doing two at a time really speeds it up. And then finishing those off with some pocket holes along two sides of each. And now the quick part, putting it all together. Now because we did a lot of the prep work ahead of time, the assembly process should be really quick. Now I didn't drive in the pocket holes along the bottom edge of the long back panel just yet. I'm gonna wait until I get all of the vertical dividers in first. And that is why. Now when I drive in the screws from the vertical divider, it'll pull that back panel into square. And just as I'm finishing the last one, family had to come check it out and test the structural integrity. All right, so with the front vertical dividers now done on the reverse side of this, we now can tackle the back, which is gonna have the angled part for laying big sheets of plywood. And the angle is exactly six degrees. Why? Why is the earth flat? 
I don't know. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna put in a top shelf with that six degree bevel cut on one side, and then we're gonna cut the long vertical rails that will go sort of down the cart like this. And then once we've got those in place, then I will trim to size these shelves that kind of fit between the two. It'll make more sense once we get there, but the build plans leave all of this stuff with a little bit of extra stock so that you can trim them to size. Using my favorite little digital angle gauge to really dial in that six degree angle on the table saw. After adding the six degree angle to the bottom of the vertical rails, I set up a temporary stop to get them all aligned while I mock them up. But first, I need to add a couple of pocket holes to the bottom of each of those vertical rails. Of course, just repeating the same steps for all four vertical rails. After sliding in each of these shelves, I get them square and then fire in a brad nail to hold them in place. Coming back afterwards with a couple of countersunk screws. Doing the same along the back edge for each of the remaining shelves. And then really all that's left is to add both the back and front skirt to the cart. Other than a couple details that you can add to this thing, like some bungee cords around the back to keep the sheets from falling off as you're moving it around, and maybe a handle to pull around, and maybe even a really cool shop greatness sign that is completely overkill for a wood storage cart. Now I'm obviously having way too much fun with laser cut parts from Send Cut Send, but if you want to experiment cutting stuff out on your own, I'll link their website down below. Other than those things, this thing is pretty much done. Now, as I already mentioned, I have full build plans for this. If you wanna make your own, they're easy to modify. If you wanna change the size or add some features, it should be pretty easy. Now, I hope more than anything, this video convinced you to do something about the wood problem you probably have in your shop, like the one I had that I had been ignoring for years. And I know there's a ton of videos here on YouTube about wood storage carts. Really, there's nothing truly amazing about the one I designed. It's just smaller and kind of perfectly fits my shop. But I also think because of that, it'll fit a lot of smaller shops out there as well. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Leave those down in the comments down below. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you're not already, consider subscribing because I've got a lot of shop content coming up that will help you achieve shop greatness. We'll do a quick subscriber update because I have not done this in a while. As of shooting today, we're at 100 59,721 subscribers. Super cool. I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you for following along on the journey and watching me get on and off the struggle bus, which I'm usually on. I will see you guys in the next video, and until then, keep pursuing shop greatness. <laughs>